Hello, in this video I'll show you how we compute effective convexity for a bond, and I'll do that by illustrating with Bruce Tuckman's table 4.3, or my rebuild of his table 4.3, and we'll see that effective convexity is a natural analog to effective duration. Recall that duration is a function of the bond's first derivative. That first derivative is change in the bond's price with respect to a small change in the yield, and then convexity then is a function of the second derivative of that price yield function. I'll show you the table, and then also show you how it matches the effective convexity when we use this more familiar form shown here. And that's an effective convexity because we are relying on the observation of the bond's price at two different yields. To illustrate effective convexity, I've rebuilt Tuckman's Table 4.3, which uses or assumes a bond with a 4.5% coupon. I believe the remaining uh, term to maturity is about seven years for this bond that's being illustrated. And my numbers don't exactly match. They're pretty close. They don't exactly match because convexity is super sensitive and there's a little bit of rounding going on. But we're computing an effective convexity, and that means it's not an analytical convexity, meaning we're using the price of the bond as at rates that are nearby or close to each other. And the specific rate differential in his exhibit, you can see here, I highlighted this in red, is 0.025%. So that's 2.5 basis points. Not a big difference here in the rates separating these. So you can see we have here really three panels in that exhibit. And here is, this bond has a price of $128.665 when the rate is 1.77%. And then if we go lower the rate here by, you can see that's two notches or five basis points, then the price goes up. And if we increase the rate by five basis points, price goes down. Okay, so that's just the price rate relationship. And then we've got, so we have three panels for that. And then here's a uh, first derivative, right? So the duration is going to be a function of the first derivative or not exactly the first derivative because it's the dollar duration that is the first derivative. And then that dollar duration is divided by price to get us the actual duration. So that's why I say duration is a function of first derivative, not exactly first derivative. And um, the first derivative has much greater, these non-intuitive units that are much higher. Okay, so the der first derivative here is just calculated rise over run, right? It's just price change divided by the associated rate change, right? Pretty straightforward. And I'll just do it manually here. I don't even think the direction really matters. What I did, I'm doing uh, nine over seven, so okay. I'll go down here to this price, subtract this price here. So that's the rise or difference on the y-axis divided by the run, being consistent, and I get my uh, first derivative, aka dollar duration, and you can see it's computed at two different points. And so that allows him to show the convexity or, or allows us to construct the convexity. And it's similar, right? Common misconception is that the duration is the first derivative and convexity is a second derivative. But it's more accurate to say duration is a function of the first derivative and convexity similarly is a function of the second derivative. We could say convexity is, or we could say dollar duration is the second derivative. So what, what that means here is that we are showing the first derivative or dollar duration. And so the convexity, well, first I'll just take the second derivative, right? And that's going to be just the di uh, same difference, a uh, rise over run, but of the first derivative, right? So I take the difference here in the real, what is really the dollar duration divided by the associated rate change. And that and then I get a very large number, which is a second derivative and which we could call it dollar convexity, but which nobody really uses, right? We want the actual convexity. So we need to uh, multiply by one over the price or divide by price. I want to make sure I do that in the middle and I get my convexity. So you can see 
It's a function of the second derivative by uh, incorporating that division of the price. And then I'm getting 40.4, pretty close to his 41. And then uh, the units of this uh, can be a little bit counterintuitive, right? Convexity is, this is 40 years squared. So that means that, if just for example, if I take the square root of that, I would get uh, 6.4 years. And then I'm more in the neighborhood of the bond's maturity, right? If it were zero coupon, it's going to be pretty close to the maturity squared. So I take the square root of this, this I get 6.4. That means I know that this, I would expect this bond's maturity is seven years or more, something greater than 6.4 years. Okay, so that's how that works. And then, or that's how uh, Tuckman's uh, table is built. And then here's the more familiar form of effective convexity, but it's no different than what I just did here mathematically, right? It's still effective convexity because it's using the price observed at the different rates and therefore really incorporating uh, the uh, second derivative of this price rate function given uh, by observing points on that price rate function. And so just if I'll just recreate this formula here just to show you it's a match, Right, I'll go for, I'll do the numerator here. Price if the yield goes up is right here. Although my order doesn't really matter here. And then I'm going to add the price if the yield goes down. See, I'm right here. And then I'm going to subtract two multiplied by the price in the middle. And that's my numerator here. And then I'm going to divide by the yield shock squared. And that's where I do want to be consistent, right? My yield shock squared really here is the uh, is two point. It's two point five. See, is the distance between each uh, each uh, notch here. So the distance between the prices that I'm using here, my yield shock is really double that, or uh, five basis points. So I'm just going to take that. Make sure I note I, I note to multiply by two. So you just sometimes have to. Uh, be mindful of what we're doing manually when, it, when, when we apply these formulas um, rather than just uh, applying them uh, l literally blindly. But then I, and I square that. So now that, now that I've taken the, uh, I, my yield shock is really five basis points that separates this price shock. I've squared that. That gets my dollar convexity over here, really. And then I just remember to, uh, or I will just add in that division by the, uh, by the price, and I get my effective convexity per this formula. So I hope that's a helpful explanation of Tuckman's uh, effective convexity. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notified of the next video. Thank you.